read this book if you haven't read it. Read the series, please. Please, for me. Please, do you see that? Yeah! You see yourself? You're so cute. You're so cute. Such a little baby. But I didn't know your name was Chance. Your name is Luna. It's not Chance. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Merely Layla. My name is Layla. If you're watching this, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Um, first of all, sorry for the setting. My room is a complete mess and I really, I'm not in the mood to clean it and being in there is stressing me out. So it's not an ideal place to film right now, which is why we're doing it outside. Um, I know it's a tad noisy, but I'll try to fix that uh, while I'm editing. Yay, editing. Um, but anyways, this is going to be my March wrap-up video. I don't often do these because I never know what to say about the books that I read. And I just feel like I ramble a lot and it just, it's not, it's not a, it's not a pretty sight. So I'm always scared to do these. But you know what? Life is, oh my god, there's a little kitty uh, patootsie um, hummingbird over there. I don't want to pick up my camera because it just, it took me forever to you know, find a good position. But yeah, he's really cute. Anyways, what I was saying was that I don't always feel confident or comfortable doing these types of videos because I just don't know how to formulate my thoughts well enough. Like, I just feel like I ramble and it's, um, it's not good. Anyways, but I'm gonna try to do it, doing it for this video, um, and like going forward just because, um, I am reading a lot now and also, um, I just want to get out of my comfort zone, so yeah. This is going to be spoiler free. Yeah, so we're not going to be spilling spoilers here. You know, I, I won't do that to you, but I'll try to, I'll try, to, I'll try, and I'll try to minimize what I say. Um, I'll try not, I'll try not to ramble. Yeah, and not get distracted either. Okay, so last month in March, I think I read, not I think, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have my um, good reads open. By the way, I initially, like in June, I set my reading goal to um, 60 books like I normally do. Or did I do 65? No, I did 60. And um, I decided that was going to be a little too much for me just because I wasn't able to meet 60 last year. So I reduced it down to 52 books a year for the year of uh, 2024. Um, so like one book per week. And I thought, you know, like, hey, this is gonna be manageable for me. And it really has been actually very manageable for me. Um, my reading slump, I wouldn't say it's like completely over, but um, it has dissipated quite a bit. So I've been reading a lot, a lot, a lot. And um, right now I'm currently seven books ahead of my, of my schedule, which is bueno. So if I like lose momentum in the next few months, then I have something to fall back on because, you know, seven books ahead. Anyways, okay. So I read um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six books in March. Um, and yeah, it was just a big mixture of romance and fantasy because that's what I'm in the mood for. And I'm not going to force myself to read something that I'm not in the mood for because then that makes me hate reading. Okay. Um, coffee. So, Left Theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood. Um, so I've read two books by this author now. So the first one was, um, The Love Hypothesis when it was, like, really popular on TikTok. Um, I think that was, sorry, I had to make sure I was filming. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to click start. But anyways, so I've read two books from this uh, series, from this author. The first one is Lo The Love Hypothesis, when it was like really popular on TikTok. And I think that was like 2020, 2019, 2021. I don't know. In that realm. In that area of, you know, the year. Area of the year? Is that even? Okay, whatever. Um, anyways, so I didn't like it. I was like, ugh. But I also, I was in a really, really, really shitty mood um, that period of time. I still am, but, you know, a little bit better now. 
Uh, so I, this time around, I enjoyed this book a lot more. Um, I initially, like, after I read The Love Hypothesis, I was like, ugh, throw up, I didn't like this. Um, and which is really weird because I normally like really cheesy, corny romance, and that's literally what that was. But I just, I just remember being irritated reading that book. It just irritated me, especially that main character. I don't even remember her name. Um, I thought she was really annoying. So I was like, maybe Ali Hazelwood is not for me. But then um, I read the summary of this book, uh, The Love Hypothesis, and I was like, you know what? This actually sounds really interesting, so let me give it a try. And I'm glad I did because I love this book. I think I, I gave it a fourth star, four stars on Goodreads. Um, so above average, you know, my I think for me, three is a solid read. Four is good. Um, anyways, uh... <laughs> The story follows uh, our main character, Elsie Hannaway. Uh, she is an adjunct professor, um, which obviously does not pay her that much money, you know, because for some reason, I don't understand why lower, like, positions at universities tend to pay, like, really, really low. I don't understand that. Because I was looking at some of the student teaching positions at ASU, and they don't pay you that much all that work for nothing like what the heck but anyway so on her free time to make extra cash she um she's a fake girlfriend um which is how she ended up meeting our male main character his name is what was your name jack um uh, jack turner smith jack jack turner smith jack turner jack turner smith yeah um so jack is the older brother of uh elsie's um favorite client Greg um when they initially meet you know like there was a bit of miscommunication when um Greg and uh, Elsie were talking about uh Jack and she ends up like confusing him for a gym teacher and she doesn't realize he's also a physicist uh she is a theoretical physicist and he's an experimental one so she doesn't that disconnect is there because she doesn't realize, like, when they were having that conversation, she was distracted by something else that was going on. Uh, and so she ends up thinking that, like, he's a gym teacher or whatever, right? you know? So keep that in mind. Um, but anyways, when they initially meet each other, it's not it's not a good introduction. It wasn't, like, a really cute, meet cute situation. Um, he, Jack is just very suspicious of her because he's a really protective uh, older brother. He's, he loves his brother, and he uh, doesn't want to see anything, you know, harmful happen to him, obviously. And then while Elsie, she thinks um, Jack is a bit cold and standoffish and kind of just brooding and... Um, yeah, although she finds him really attractive, obviously. They both find each other attractive, like, right off the bat. Um, anyways, so, you know, she, uh, Elsie decides that, like, being an adjunct forever is not something that she wants. You know, she wants, she doesn't want to teach. Uh, she doesn't want to deal with students. Some of the emails they fe uh, featured in this, in this book by the students were so funny. Like, it was one of the things that made me giggle so hard, uh, reading them. But anyway, she decides, you know, that's not something that she wants. She wants to actually be in, she wants to do research. She wants to be a researcher. So she applies for this uh, really competitive uh, position at MIT. And she is one of the only two competitors. Um, uh, one, she's a, obviously Elsie is a uh, theoretical uh, physicist while the other uh, person that's like competing for the position is a experimental physicist and apparently in the world of uh, physics there's like this disconnect and this com uh, competition between theoretical physicists and um, experimental physicist and Jack Turner is an experimental f physicist that uh, did something uh, that ended up ruining the career of uh, Elsie's mentor who is a theoretical physicist so you know they're kind of like feuding they're you know fighting a little bit those people in the in, the, in that community um and so half the hiring committee for the position that she's going for not half but like 
some want her uh, instilled and in, like they want her hired instead of the experimental physicist because I guess it would like prove prove their point and kind of cement their position as being like valid and stuff. So uh, yeah, um, Jack Turner when she arrives at like this uh, event to meet the the committee on board that's going to be like assessing her, she ends up oh my god the hummingbird is back. She ends up. Um, uh, seeing Jack there, and she's kind of like, oh my god, what are you doing here? I thought you were a gym teacher. And he's like, wait, this doesn't add up. You said you were a librarian, you know? Yeah, so uh, but basically they end up having to interact because of the job that she wants and him being on the job committee. And uh, they start spending time with each other and start to learn more about each other. Um, and yeah, that's basically how the story goes. Um, I really related with Elsie a lot because I too am a really bad people pleaser. Um, I honestly like, I'm becoming more good at saying no when I don't want something. Um, but it's always really hard on me. Like my heart literally pounds and I get so anxious whenever I have to say no to someone. Um, and so I related with her on in that term um you know it's a it's a really hard thing to deal with and so seeing that reflected in the book was really um it's really cool because you know this is some of the stuff that I deal with um I like how Jack was like super protective like he wasn't mean at all I didn't I didn't feel like he was like mean you know what I mean like in those like enemies to lovers kind of situations although I wouldn't say these were enemies to lovers I feel like this is more of like rival rivals situation you know um so he wasn't like unnecessarily mean with his like the way that he said things I I just found him kind of like protective and very um just protective uh and he like by the end i think it's because of him that she learned how to stand up for herself uh because and it's not like he taught her but he just kind of gives her the confidence to start speaking up for herself which is a really cool dynamic you know because you want people um that want to support you and that want to protect you around you right and also people that like have some malintent for you um like some of the people around her her mother was something else in this book like i wanted her to shut the fuck up <laughs> sorry her brother is also like what total losers they were um so those are the types of people that she's had around her uh, even her mentor is a piece of shit no offense i don't know i don't think that's a spoiler but just she doesn't have people around her that support her at all and so earning jack you know having jack in her corner is something uh by the end of the book is uh, a really cool thing so she has she has a community that love and support her you know um okay so i'm gonna stop rambling and that um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that's it for that it's a good book you should read it um i loved again i love the emails the emails were really funny because um I may uh, may or may not have written something stupid like that to one of my professors before, so. <laughs> um, and then also, uh, the really fun, they were like really funny, or funny bad uh, sciencey dad jokes. Um, I was literally like sitting in my, at work and reading and like giggling away because it was just so funny. Um, Aurora, what are you doing? What are you doing? Is it nice and cool over there? Is it nice and cool? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, babies. Chinky, get up here. Come on, up. Come on. Come on, up. Good girl. Good girl. You know, let me see your sweet little face. Let me teach your sweet little face. Do you see that? Yeah. You see yourself? You're so cute. You're so cute. Mwah. Such a little baby. Mwah. Mwah. But I didn't know your name was Chance. Your name is Luna. It's not Chance. You want a goldfish? I'll give you a goldfish. Uh, yum. That's so yummy.
that's it I'm not gonna be anymore that's it okay so the second book that I read is A Fate of Wrath and Flame and I'm actually gonna group the following uh, two books with it um, so I read A Fate of, a Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. E. Tucker, which is the first book in the Fate and Flame series. The second book is A Curse of Blood and Stone. And the third book is A Queen of Thieves and Chaos. So in A Fate of Wrath and Flame, we're introduced to Romelia, who is a, a survivor, you know. Um, sh her father is in struggling with mental health uh and that has caused him to enter a life of like homelessness and um heartache basically and her mother uh what the heck is this i don't know how this happened i just watched this yesterday we're gonna ignore that <laughs> um, but basically her mother has chosen a life that kind of, I guess, excludes Romeria and isolates her, the mother, isolates her from all of society, basically. You know, you don't want to be in this type of a group. Can I say cult? She's in a cult. I don't think that's a spoiler. Um, so because of those reasons, uh, Romeria has learned to fend for herself and she initially chose well not initially but she chooses a life of thievery just to help her survive um and when she's 18 years old she ends up stealing um from this crime boss that kind of causes her to uh become indebted to him because he decides not to kill her like he decides to keep her and use her so she ends up making her money basically through him and through um an enslavement to him if that makes sense uh, one day she runs across this mysterious woman that offers her um, something much better than uh, what she's getting from her the current crime boss. His name is, um, I think, Korsakov. Uh, so this mysterious person ends up sending Romeria to, to this uh, other realm full of magical creatures and fae uh, and Romeria has to basically learn how to survive it. In this new world, uh, she is a princess. She is kind of tossed into this political crisis that's occurring um, and people there are suspicious of her. They don't trust her. They think that she committed crimes she had no knowledge of. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's basically all I can say without spoiling stuff. I absolutely loved the series. Like it completely caught me off guard. I, I I don't know what I was expecting when I opened this book to read it, but I'm just I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. I think this is one of my favorite series of all times. Like I just I the moment I was done reading A Fate of Wrath and Flame, I literally started rereading it right off the bat because I just did not want this world to end. Um, Romeria is like the perfect ma uh, female main character. She is like, she's she's everything I desire in a female character. She is stubborn. She's kind-hearted. She is fierce. She is strong. She doesn't let people walk all over her. She is, she has a really great moral compass. She is not afraid to speak up for people that are less fortunate than her she is just she was perfect she didn't make stupid decisions um out of stupid conclusions that she like came in her head she just she was perfect i absolutely adored her i don't think i've liked a female main character as much as i have liked romeria like she was perfect this is this is what i want in a female character like she was so good. Um, and then Xander. Xander was also really great. He is your typical, like, king that's brooding and um, angry and, like, you know, like, grumpy. He's that typical male character. But he has a lot of substance to him. A lot of the anger, a lot of the animosity, a lot of the heartbreak and, like, just 
distrust that he has um, for Romeria makes absolutely, it just makes complete sense based off of the events that happened um, before, you know, Romeria's like thirst into, thirst, thirst? Romeria, before Romeria is tossed into this world, uh, you know, just every emotion that he feels towards her, all the anger, all this hatred has substance, it has grounds, it has, it just makes sense. Um, and so some of his actions in the, or in the beginning, though they can be like, uh, like, what's up your ass? Like, you could be like, what? why is he acting like this? It just makes sense. It just makes a lot of sense. And so when they get together, it's, it's just chef's kiss because it, it was a perfect slow burn between the two of them. That's that's how I can say it. Um, and I feel like this is a true, like in the beginning, it is a true enemies to lovers situation. Like the hatred is there. The intent to kill in the beginning is there. But at the end, the love is there, the adoration is there, the obsession is there, you know what I mean? So it was just, just it was so good that I shipped them. I think they're one of my favorite uh, romanticy, you know, couples ever. Um, this is how you write a romanticy. This is how you write a slow burn. Like, it was just chef's kiss. It was written really well, right? And it also features one of my favorite, uh, like, tropes i guess you can say where like a modern person is kind of sent to a world that's kind of like a bit medieval and just very different from uh you know like a modern society i guess you would say um like i recently read a book that is similar to this called the thinking the thinking woman's guide to real magic by emily croy baker and although i loved that book i gave it a three stars i think a fate of wrath and flame is like that but done better ex executed much more better like you care about the characters you're not annoyed by their the decisions that they make because they make sense um so it was really great and basically the second two books um uh what was it um a curse of blood and stone and a queen of thieves and chaos um take place obviously after the events that happen in book one which kind of it's kind of, it becomes a bit chaotic at the end, and so they kind of have to work. Xander and um, Xander and Romeria have to or Romy have to work together to kind of resolve the issues that happen in book one. Um, one thing I loved about the following books after the first one is that you know normally like the first book is always like a hit, and then the second one is always kind of like. Mm, I wish you went, you know, like, you don't always agree with the course a lot of authors take, but with this one, like, I was 100% on board. They, every book, all the books were 5 out of 5 for me. They, were, they all have 5 stars on Goodreads because I just, I adored them so much. Um, I loved Fourth Wing. I think I've said this on this channel before, I'm not sure. But I loved Fourth Wing. But one thing that I pissed that not pissed me off, but I, I was annoyed by in Iron Flame is the fact that the author decided to separate uh, Violet and um, Zayden. I almost forgot his name. Zayden and Xander. Oh my god, too many z sounds for names. But, but like, I was annoyed that the two main characters in um, Fourth Wing, you know, Fourth Wing is a great romanticy in my opinion, but in romanticy, like, you want to see you, the two romantic interest, interests to be together not separated for like a good majority of the book that like that made me so mad and so at the end of the first book i was like really worried that xander and Romy were gonna be like separated but they weren't i don't think that's a spoiler but they weren't they literally they have to work together to resolve a lot of the issues um that gets laid out in the first book and then on top of that like you meet a lot of different characters you would think like when you're initially meeting them, you know, they don't, they don't have that much of substance, not substance, but like, you could just, you, you just kind of think, oh, they're, they're just, they're just a character that's like featured here. They don't really hold that much importance, but no, that's not true because minor characters you meet in the first book end up being major characters in the second book and third book. They end up playing a huge role and you would just like, you'd be like, oh, I wasn't expecting this from you, but I'm so glad you were brought back for this greater purpose. Like everybody has a role to play and they play it pretty well. Um, so yeah, everybody was really great. The only per person that annoyed me, well, of the main characters, the only person that annoyed me was Atticus, but I'm learning to like him. I hate, I was, 
if you bought him in the first book, I was like, oh my god, did not like him in the second book. But in the, the third book, I was like, okay, I see there's like potential in you. Um, so yeah. I won't say, say any more about that. Um, who else? Uh, Boaz was shithead. I did not like him in the first book. I did not like him in the second book. And I didn't like him in the third book. I do understand his reasons, you know, the reasons he has. I understand where, like, his moral compass is. Like, and that gives me, like, a good insight on the character. But I just, I didn't care for him. But everybody else, like, I loved so much. Everybody. Mika is one of my favorites. Pan is one of my favorites. Like, read this book if you haven't read it. Read the series, please. Please, for me. Another book that I read in uh, March is uh, Daughter of No World by uh, Carissa Borben. If I said her name wrong, I sincerely apologize. I, I don't know why, but I always have a hard time with last names you know but anyways so this book this book was very confusing to me like I did not know how to feel about it um I enjoyed it but I also like to not enjoy it at the same time I wanted to give it a four star but then I was like but it wasn't really a four star read I don't know like it has, it's well written but it's very very emotionally heavy if you're gonna read this book I really encourage you to read the trigger warnings. I don't know if there are trigger warnings, but I would look up what are the trigger warnings in this in this book because I think it's a trilogy. Because it was it was just it was heavy. It was it was a, a fate of uh, wrath and flame features heavy concepts as well, but not like Daughter of No Worlds, not like this. It's just a lot. It was a lot, and I just didn't know how to feel about it. Um, basically, uh, Daughter of No Worlds follows our main character. I think her name is Tizana. Uh, Tizana is forced into slavery at a very young age, and she is forced to do things that children should not be forced to freaking do. It's just disgusting. Um, it, ugh, I felt so bad for her. Like, I wanted to give her a hug. Yeah, it, it was just... Uh, this poor girl, you know, she is forced to like be a for performer for this. Um, I don't know. Is it like a brothel? I don't, yeah, but she's forced to perform and she uses like the little magic that she has to be a great performer. And at a young age, you know, when she's tossed into this world of servitude, she decides that she was going to buy herself free, uh, her freedom. And so, uh, you know, at the start of this book, she has acquired all the money that she needs to buy herself from her master, that piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. And so, um, when she tries to buy her freedom, well, before she buys her, you know, freedom, she, we learn about this guy that's a part of the order, which is like the society full of magical wielders. Uh, and he uh, gave her the aspiration of joining, of wanting to join the order because he told her anybody can do it, you know? So she, in her head, she's, you know, free herself and she's going to go and join the order and uh, acquire the means that she needs to free her people from slavery, basically. Um, and so when she, when it's time to buy herself freedom, uh, from her master, she doesn't, it doesn't go as she expected. And it kind of shows her, her naive, her naiveness. But again, it's not like, it's not naiveness. Like it's just, it's hope that she had, you know, I don't want to call her naive. It was just, it's the hope that she got that kind of gets crushed and it's just, um, uh, it was just so heartbreaking uh and i did not like the stuff that happened with her in that in that beginning and that interaction i just i like could not read it <laughs> i had to like skip some lines because i was like oh my god this is, this is too much um but anyways she ends up freeing herself and she goes and joins the order but you know her age kind of is uh a bit of um causes a bit of a blockade basically um but they offer her a shortcut to joining the order the members and one of the things one of the things that she has to do in order to be like a full member of the order is uh become an apprentice to this uh jaded warrior named um maxim maximonius or max let's say for short um and he has he wants nothing to do with the order he doesn't want to train her and so she has to kind of like convince him to train her to prepare her uh for you know 
for joining the order to help her uh, learn how to yield the magic that wield the magic that she has. Um, but yeah, uh, so she they were quite the the match. She is jaded. He is uh, he was forced to do something that he was not happy to do. Uh, he was. Ugh, there's a scene with him and his family where I just I could not stomach it like it was just so it's a lot it was a lot and, and I felt I feel so bad for both of these characters so uh you know he has lost all hope and um and by spending time with her he ends up finding um the goodness in humans again in society he finds the goodness in life the enjoyment in it and everything uh, and through him she learns how to wield the magic that she has but also find love and comfort um stuff that she had been lacking um growing up as a slave so i think that's all i can say without spoiling um the series but it was just uh, it featured a lot of heavy topics that were kind of hard for me to stomach which is why i was kind of like iffy about this book um i definitely want to finish the trilogy i just need a breather between it um there was just one particular scene that happens in the beginning, but then like a version of it happens again at the end. And I was just like, this was not necessary. Like the, like I was like, why did the author decide to do this again? Like we already saw it happen. Why is it happening again? Like featuring Tasana and like two different male characters. Like why? I just I think that's one of the reasons one of the major reasons where I was like rereading that scene and I was like you already forced us to really live through this but you're making us do it again at the end like why it was not unnecessary I feel like she could have gone without including that in the story if you know if you read this book then you know what I'm talking about it's just it was too much um and then I think I find the magical system or the magical world a little confusing as well um and then I was kind of confused about the device if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i was kind of confused about that too um so i guess like my the reason why this isn't like a five star for me is just because of again like that little bit of confusion with the world with the magic of magic system um some of the concepts that a fe features and just that repetition is just of that event that happened in the beginning that happens again at the end i was just like no <sighs> okay that's it. That's all I'm going to say about this book. It is honestly a really good book. It's written very well. Um, and I do recommend that you read it. But it just, again, please reread. Uh, not reread, but like read. Look up the trigger warnings in the book before you do. Because it's a lot. All right. So last but not least, um, I read My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. Now this book. This book was absolutely silly. It was ridiculous. But like in the best way possible. I was like giggling my ass off. Like a good majority of this book. And it's very corny. So it's definitely not for everybody. Um, I gave it a three star. To me three is a, again it's a solid read. So it was it was actually it was so it's. <laughs> It's funny. Um, so the story follows our main character. Her name is Cassie Greenberg. And she is in a financial pickle. She is a struggling artist. Um, and she just really needs to make uh, financial decisions. She's about to get evicted from her apartment. And so she needs to change her living situation. She has family that love and support her. But she thinks that she's a disappointment to them. So she doesn't reach out to her mother and father for help. Uh, and her best friend does a lot for her already, so she doesn't want to, like, I guess, abuse his, his uh, care and, like, hospitality or whatever. And so she looks for uh, a different place to live on Craigslist. So she finds this, like, roommate needed listing on um, Craigslist, and it's, like, for dirt cheap. They are offering her, like, a giant room, like, a just a really awesome place to live for only like two hundred dollars a month and she thinks it's a scam and then later finds out it's not a scam um so the guy that she's gonna be rooming with is frederick j fitzwilliam 
<laughs> Fred is funny. Fred is hilarious. He is a vampire that has not been a part of society for a long time due to some stuff that happens in the past. And so he is looking for a mortal person uh, to basically help him become more human or like just learn the customs of the humans around him basically and so uh, yeah they meet together they become roommates uh, she finds out he's a vampire and um she flips out but then he's like i need your help and then she's like sure i'll help you because 200 dollars a month is totally fine and also she like she likes him she finds him attractive um and also like she senses his um innocence i guess you could say like he's not malicious so she's like you know what i'll help you um but yeah it's really funny um the family was just so melodramatic like it's so funny like <laughs> this is i feel like there's a scene where you're like he sees a picture of her and he gets so mad and like uh upset that it takes him like two days to get over it just to talk to her like just to face her again i was like cackling my my ass off his the way he spoke was so formal like you know and it's just it's really funny it's a really funny book um it's a silly book so if you're looking for like a popcorn read is what i would call it this this is a good book to do it um but yeah i think that is it i think that is it for for this for this for this monthly review or it's not even a review it's more of like a monthly ramble of about the stuff that i read this this month or last month but yeah. oh also i wanted i brought these out so i can show you guys i bought look what i bought look what i bought Ooh, ooh, so pretty so pretty what's the third one Ooh, i love the covers on these look at this they smell delicious i bought these on abooks.com uh it was used already so second hand um i think i spent like $50 on all three. Which is not bad, in my opinion, because on Amazon, like the new ones were like 20 or like 18 to $20 each. So, yeah. Okay, so that's it. Bye-bye.